On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what uh, go on? A blessed and wonderful uh, Friday morning to each and every person out there tuning in to On The Spot News Media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So in the morning, I'm a peeps, I have a few stories for share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the Diaspora. So please, like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog, so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in a Jamaica. So watch it now, my peeps, uh, to the name Friday, the start of a brand new weekend you don't know how jamaica run right and you know, sad to say but as it approaches the weekend things kind of turn up a certain way so whilst you're traveling right across the length and breadth of jamaica sea of travel pan the gravel and as always my peeps continue what's the look out on the corner yai kazwa the old dirty corner boy them always out there Alerts, yeah man. So I can move right on into this morning's set of hot topics. Now the first thing that we are going to talk about is some viral videos circulating all over social media involving five prominent high schools across the corporate area. And uh, the principals of those corporate area high schools have prepared a joint statement condemning the recent flare-up of violence among its students. So the principals of Calabar High School, the principal of Mona High School, Jamaica College, St. George's College and Kingston College have described the behavior of its students as unacceptable and against the core values of respect and civility and cooperation. Now on your screen, is just a small snippet of one of the many viral videos. Now in one of the viral videos, you could see a crowd of students. You could see them slapping, kicking, stamping and punching each other in the middle of the half a tree bus terminal. At one point in the video, you could see a male student was set upon by another group of boys and viciously beaten. It is alleged that the dispute stemmed from a disagreement over a girl from the Queen's High School in the corporate area. It is also stated that principals Wilson, Jones, Robinson, Myrie and Campbell are seeking to assure parents and the wider public that a thorough investigation is underway to determine the facts surrounding the incident. The principals say that the students involved will be dealt with according to the disciplinary measures outlined in their respective school rules. The school administrators stated that they are also collaborating with the police to ensure appropriate legal actions is taken. The principals stated that the behavior displayed by the students will not be tolerated. So now we are going to hear from the principal of the Mona High School as he weighs in on this latest spate of violence involving some of his students. Listen. A lot of schools are now involved and the lives of our students are in danger. So I decided now to, you know, send out something to all the parents, the Board of Management, Ministry, and of course to the members of staff that, listen, we will have to shut down school for today, suspend classes for today and, and tomorrow. Lives of students are very, very important. These are some of these kids are wayward students. Value system is very poor, and I don't trust that you know some of these kids will come to their senses and say, you know what, foolishness is foolishness. Let us stop it. So I decided to just put my students out of harm's way, so to speak, you know, and then you know remove them from the entire physical space. 
I'll be heading up to Calabar High School to have a meeting with the headmistress Wilson about the matter. I think the issue of uh, of um, the, the core values, you know, the, the respect and the, the honesty and the, the you know all of those things that we try to inculcate in our in our students. I think what we are seeing is a deficiency in these core values in our children. The late Whitney Houston did a song a couple of years ago that is definitely way older than all of these students involved that clearly states, I believe the children are the future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. We have taught these children well and they are leading the way with the lessons taught. So their behavior is most definitely a reflection of our society. So I will most definitely not just cast blame at the feet of the students, but also us as parents, us as adults that are showing them that, hey, it is okay to take the life of a person that you have a verbal altercation with. It is seen in all sectors of our society, all walks of life. Right around them is just violence. So what do we expect from them if all they're seeing is just a bunch of angry adults and bloodthirsty ones? My peeps, these are our future leaders, the future of tomorrow. And from all indications, the future definitely don't look bright. Bullbrook, yeah man. Now another incident took place yesterday over there in Irwin in St. James. Boy, may I tell you. I definitely have to just put all of this in together since we are talking about students and violence. But this time, this young man presently on your screen is laying on a block of ice. Lost his life to the hands of fellow students. Can you imagine my peeps sending your child to school? And getting a call or calls stating that your child is no longer among the land of the living and laying in a morgue on a block of ice. How would you feel to yourself if that was your child? And I'm speaking to the parents of the child that took this young man's life. He has since been identified as Ranil plumber just 15 years old he was a student at the Irwin school in St. James now reports reaching on the spot news media that he was fatally knifed up by another student at Irwin high school which is located in Montego Bay St. James whilst the information surrounding the incident is sketchy at the moment it has been confirmed that the incident took place yesterday, Thursday, during an heated altercation between the boys. Now on your screen is a brief recording of the incident itself. You know I can't play the entire thing because it's not YouTube friendly, but just to show you what I am definitely speaking of. And it is really sad to see how our children are. But the blame has to be rest squarely at the feet of the adults in society. Because this is how we are also with each other. So they are learning from us. Take some of these very same students from out of the environment that they are in and take them into another environment which violence literally is little to none and you would see a total transformation 
in most if not all because we all know my peeps there is always an exception to the rule but that's a given fact if the environment is more peaceful the people will adjust likewise so my peeps we have a lot of work to do because if not our children and our children's children are doomed take it not for granted because you will never know if your child will be next poor oh, I may I tell you the thing rough and still in the parish of St. James my peeps this what I'm about to share with you will most definitely be shocking to some but will most definitely be nothing strange to others but what is rather strange about this it took place in the Freeport lockups in Montego Bay, St. James. Now, this criminal element here, presently on your screen, who, if I am right, probably I'm wrong about the name, probably, I don't know, but I think he goes by the name of Wappy from Cambridge in St. James. Correct me. If I'm wrong but the name of the person is not even significant at the moment but as you can see he's in a cell so we all can see the bars the grills the gate you definitely know how the cell block setup would have looked so we know for sure that he's in a police lockup well, on the spot news media can confirm that it is in the Freeport Police lockup. So, Freeport Police, on a need for tune in and say exactly what I go on. This criminal element here, let me call him Wapim Elias, is in a police paraphernalia. To be more specific, look at his head you'll see a police cap. Now, I'm for sure that no police in his right sense would give to him his cap to take a picture. So nothing more than the squaddy, them come down upon the cell block and do them work and probably dropped his hat accidentally and the hat was confiscated by the criminal. Now he is in his cell, taking pics, pictures, and posting it on TikTok. Can you imagine? Now I'm going to play for you some video clippings of the criminal element seemingly enjoying his stay whilst on the cell block of the Montego Bay Freeport lockup. Or should I say that he's staying at the Rio Montego Bay Resorts. Now on your screen you can see him videotaping a police officer on the job. And seemingly enjoying himself whilst making or acting a fool. And doing his latest dance move and showcasing it all over social media then these are the criminal elements that says that the regular members of Chan Public are informers and all informa fedoa. Yeah, man. Now we're going to hear from the criminal element as he makes a statement, basically, to members of Chan Public and also to the officers on duty. So I want to listen carefully to what the criminal element has to say. Listen. Yeah, man. Set, yeah, set the thing, man. We swore when we carry from the jail and feel like, say, oh, yeah, we have a mother, and we have a kill ourselves. Go out and come from the land in the cell, man. Yeah, man. They are firm and I'm going to see you, man. 
So all the officers that work in the cell blocks at the Freeport Police lockup on a need to take note of these criminal elements who have their cell phones and videotaping not just themselves but also your actions in these police lockups. And to all other inmates who just have them little cell phone na the cell, nah use it for do nothing out of the way, even though it's illegal. Only just I use it for probably stay in touch with the lawyers, stay in touch with the family members and just try to keep abreast of what is happening with your family, encouraging them, trying to cheer them on whilst they do the same for you. And basically just a try to keep a level head. Criminal elements like these make uno lose uno little illegal cell phones in a jail. So if you want to know what a real informer is, this is what an informer looks like. Yeah man, but a glad feet still, we definitely, definitely glad feet still so we can definitely showcase on self to the regular members of Chan Public. So we can definitely know say when time on a jump out and end up get spread out. The regular members of Chan Public will definitely show no sympathies towards you because you are one of the irredeemable ones stuck in your ways and even when you're placed behind bars instead of reforming and conforming to the rules that you are to adhere to in the police lockup you're still in the police lockup acting a fool and also to the regular members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Look to within your ranks. Because the phone them never walk. Go around there. Yeah man. Say so anyway my peeps. Make we continue. Now over there in the St. Catherine North Police Division. A prominent medical doctor. For those who is from Spanish Town and surrounding areas and communities in St. Catherine would most definitely know Dr. Paul Robinson. And uh, sometimes, you know my peeps, when I hear on the spot news media and like-minded vloggers put some information out there that involve some of our most prominent figures, most of you turn your nose upon us and state in the claim that we're just seeking cheap popularity and clout and seeking views for our YouTube channels and that these prominent members of society will not and could have never been involved in such foolishness that we are speaking of. Well now, right before your very eyes, some has not yet even realized but Dr. Paul Robinson was arrested and charged by the police for his alleged involvement with members of the notorious Klansman gang. That's the Tesha Miller led faction of the Klansman gang. Dr. Paul Robinson operates a medical facility along Young Street in Spanish Town, St. Catherine. I'm pretty sure that many eyes have been opened wide and many jaws drop stating that this prominent doctor cannot be involved in such. Well, I'm going to allow you to hear from the head of the crime portfolio in the Jamaica Constabulary Force, that's Deputy Commissioner of Police, Fitz Bailey, as he provides an update into this ongoing arrest and charge of the medical doctor along with other clansman operatives listen as the police continues its anti-gang effort i wish to confirm that dr paul alondo robinson is 65 years old medical doctor who operates somewhere in the young street here of spanish town was arrested by the police seat up to be specific on reasonable suspicion 
of breach of the Criminal Justice Suppression of Criminal Organization Act. His arrest emanated from the ongoing investigation into the Tesha Miller-led fraction of this clan's young regarding provision of services made to the criminal underworld. He appeared on an ID parade today and was pointed out by two witnesses. He will be processed and the formal charges laid later on today or tomorrow. Well, there you have it, my peeps. Now, the last thing that we are going to talk about, another female has lost her life to the hands of criminal elements. So the police are seeking three suspects in relation to the fatal knockings and clappings of this 45-year-old bartender who has since been identified as Julian Brown, who was taken out in a hail of bullets during a daring daylight robbery at a bar in Prembocal, Kingston on Tuesday afternoon. Now, the official police reports from the Dwayne Park Police suggest that sometime around 1.40 p.m. on Tuesday, Julian Brown was inside her bar when three men approached and demanded money. When their demands was not met, one of the criminal elements opened gunfire, hitting Julian Brown before escaping in the area on foot. The police was summoned and Julian Brown was taken to the hospital, where unfortunately she was pronounced you know what. Now, the police are stating that Brown named her Nakis and Clappis before she succumbed to her injuries. Now, the name of the perpetrator was not gathered by on the spot news media. But of course, we will most definitely be keeping tabs of this because the perpetrators reportedly destroyed a surveillance footage also during the robbery. So, on the spot news media will most definitely be keeping close tabs to this one and update you in a subsequent newscast. So anyway, my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscasts. On The Spot News Media. Yeah, man.